Hello again everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at SOA development. And we're going to have a whole bunch more videos uh, that talk about exactly the types of things that you have to do to create a SOA based application. We're going to go through the details of understanding all of the different um, standards that are out there so that you can create SOA applications and following standards is an absolute essential piece of developing SOA applications. It's the only way really that your SOA environment is going to work is if you follow standards. So we're going to spend a whole bunch of time and a bunch of different videos on the different standards that are out there. We're also going to hop into JDeveloper and we're going to look at a lot of the different techniques that you can use inside of JDeveloper to create SOA based applications. But this video I'm really going to focus on kind of the philosophy that goes behind SOA based development and what you have to think about as a developer and as an architect when you're creating SOA based applications. You have to kind of approach it from a little bit of a, a different standpoint. And we're going to start talking about that in this video. Like I said in the other videos, uh, we'll hop into a lot of the specifics of what we're just going to touch on in this video. So, one of the things to know about SOA development is that pretty much all programming languages that are out there today. All modern programming languages have this concept of being able to reuse code. And what are the types of things that are available for you to reduce code? Well, you have procedures. Oh, boy, did I screw that one up. Functions, you have libraries. Virtually every modern programming language um, has this concept where you can break something down into a procedure. And let's say, you know, as an example, we were talking about, you know, doing a credit check on a, a, a customer. So you might have this credit check procedure. I'll call it credit underscore check. And it takes, you know, a parameter as maybe uh, the person's social security number, uh, the amount that they're asking for for credit and it returns a value of uh, you know uh, pass fail so uh, approval and that's just you know kind of a yes or no type of thing so this type of thing can be implemented in virtually any programming language that we're talking about PLSQL, Java, um, C Sharp any language that's out there, you have this concept of you know developing a procedure, and you can turn this into a function too, where the function takes in these things and just returns the approval of yes or no. And uh, you can also put this into a library that could be called uh, by a whole bunch of different programs. So we have this concept of being able to reuse the code. Some of the issues that we have with this, however, is that for all intents and purposes, whatever language you develop this in, let's say you develop this in, in PLSQL inside of a form that you turn into a library uh, that the form can then call. So this is a little PLSQL package here. For all intents and purposes, only other PLSQL programs can call this library, can call this particular procedure or function to you know perform a credit check on a particular um, customer. There are ways that you can make you know, a C program or a C sharp program be able to um, call a PLSQL library, but they're incredibly cumbersome to use, very difficult to maintain. For all intents and purposes, whatever language you develop this particular piece of code in is the only language you're going to be able to call it from. So you can develop this really cool set of libraries that you can use in your forms applications that you can call from PLSQL. And if that's all you ever use, you know, that's great. But most environments and most organizations are large enough, and if they have best of breed applications, they might have some PLSQL applications, they might have some Java applications, they might have some C sharp applications. So being able to, you know, call this or set up some kind of mechanism where you can create something that can be used across a bunch of different applications and different languages, you know, really doesn't exist under this paradigm. You certainly can't call this from let's say another operating system so even if you did um, go through the effort of you know creating this library and you set up these wrappers around it so that you can call them from different languages if you have this as let's say a PLSQL um, you know library 
on a Windows server, let's say Windows 2008 server, and just kind of sitting there, and then you have a Java program on running on a Linux server, and you want to call this guy, that's virtually impossible to do. I mean, yes, there's probably somebody who's worked on some kind of weird library, uh, you know, operating system translation thing where you can do that. But for all intents and purposes, this really isn't something that you can do. So you're locking yourself into a particular language or a particular vendor if you go about uh, constructing these libraries in such a way that you know you want to use them across different systems it, you really cut down on the flexibility what if you had some kind of mechanism where you could create some kind of you know chunk of code that does a very specific business service like doing a credit check that's an example of a, of a business service, right? Something that, that returns uh, an approval uh, for a particular customer. What if there was some way that you can create this kind of business service and then you can expose it on the internet and instead of calling it the internet, I'm technically going to call it TCP IP. You know, you can expose it over TCP IP and it wouldn't matter. The language wouldn't matter. The OS wouldn't matter. Nothing would matter. None of this would be important. You could just have this business service that was exposed over TCP IP and any language you wanted could then call this business service. You could have a Java program. You could have a .NET program. You can have an ASP program. You can have Visual Basic. You can have Oracle Application Express. You could have uh, Microsoft C Sharp. Any language at all could then call this business service and again it wouldn't matter what operating system it was sitting on it wouldn't matter what language it was written in uh, nothing would matter and on top of all this you would have this business service that would actually describe itself it could describe itself so that any language that was interested in calling this business service like credit check would know how to call it so a Java program could figure out, oh, okay, these are the parameters that I have to pass in. This is the information I'm going to get back. Same thing with uh, Oracle Application Express, C Sharp, uh, ASP Pages, uh, .NET, Visual Basic. Any language that understood what, what this was could then get the description for it and then call it back and say, okay, I'm going to use this particular business service. Well, this technology does exist, and it's called Web Services. And web services are incredibly powerful for organizations. Why are they powerful for organizations? And in this video, we're just going to take a look at the development piece. In another, lang in another video, we're going to talk about why it's essential for businesses and why it's really important that uh, businesses uh, use web services. But one of the really nice things about web services from a development point of view is, you know, we've already talked about the benefits, the language doesn't matter, the operating system doesn't matter. But one of the really nice things about it is that you can test this business service and test it within an inch of its life. Once this particular business service is tested and you're sure that it works really well, like a credit check, you then have a single point of development that can say anytime I need to do a credit check on somebody I know where to reference it. I can reference it through this web service that's sitting on my uh, application server somewhere. Once I have this, any program can use it. A Java program could use it. A PL SQL program could use it. A Visual Basic program could use it. So one of the really nice things about web services is that it gives you the, um, the ability to modularize your software and to uh, set up uh, different kind of rules and security as to who can access it, what type of information can be returned by it. It's an incredibly powerful way of doing it. What goes along with service-oriented architecture is this concept of what's called a composite application. And a composite application, I'm going to put this under a SOA heading here and try to draw like a little box around it this way. A composite application is something that takes a whole, a one or more business services and constructs an application around it. So I might have, let's say, a composite application that um, puts, uh, lets me add new vendors to my system. So I might have a web service that adds the information about my vendor. So I might have, you know, this add vendor web service. 
that gathers a whole bunch of information uh, about the vendor and then as part of this add vendor web service I then do a credit check on them I get a credit score for this particular vendor I put that inside my database I uh, then write a composite application that calls each one of these guys individually and again I'm not limited to having the credit check as part of this application I can use credit check anywhere because it's been deployed as a web service and it's available to me for any type of application that needs a credit check it's available to me I, all I have to do is just call this piece of information pass it the, the information I need I can then take this credit check maybe and change it around so that it's not just for individual customers I can have it for businesses I can have it for vendors uh, you know I can uh, change credit check around so that it's flexible enough to have a whole bunch of uh, different functionality built into it that I can then use in a whole bunch of different applications and then when it comes time for me to create a new application it's not something that I have to write from scratch it's just a question of taking a whole bunch of web services putting them together in an interesting way and creating an application real easy so that's one of the main tenants that goes along with service oriented architecture development it's certainly not the only one and again in other videos we're going to talk about some of the other features that go along with SOA development but from a developer point of view this is a real key concept to understand and to sort of have that in the back of your mind when you're going through and creating and designing uh, SOA based applications